everybody. Welcome to Finding Common Battlegrounds. This is the podcast, the political podcast that's based on civility, where we try to find what we have in common more than we have not in common. And so it's we're trying to focus on the overlap rather than the fringes and the edges and uh, try to keep it uh, where... Um, and we're, we're always surprised at how much we do agree on. And I think we do have a lot to agree. And I think most people agree on most uh, a lot of the same stuff, but we always seem to focus on the, the what we don't agree on. So let's um, today we're going to be talking about uh, state militias, uh, Florida's sta uh, state militia. And we're going to be also talking about um, elitism. And um, but uh, we've been we took a little break. We've been uh, gone for a little while. Uh, Ryan's been globe trotting all over the, the world. Um, and I've been, uh, you know, sparring, spar buddy with Elon Musk, training for his uh, fight with Mark Zuckerberg and uh, taking a few. Uh, this is actually a headband, but it's covering up. It looks like a bandage because it's covering up a bandage because um, I had a big chunk of my forehead cut out, but uh, just getting old stuff. Um, yeah. Nothing exciting. <sighs> Wouldn't it be but, nice if it was exciting at this point in our lives? It is just like, I get it. I'm getting well, it. The thing is, if, if it wasn't this, it'd be like, I got up and, and hit the cabinet door right in the fridge or mm -hmm. in the kitchen. But uh, <sighs> yeah. something like that. Uh, it's ridiculous how easy it is to pull a muscle at 46 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, ooh, I stepped wrong and now I can't move. Yeah. Um, fascinating. How was, how was uh, world travel? Yeah, so I have been to a ridiculous number of countries this summer, um, and I do have a story that I'm I'm going to share with our listeners. I'd be really interested in people's feedback because I I think I think this is actually really fascinating. You can tell me like, oh wow, Ryan, that is the dumbest story you've ever told, right? Uh, but but I thought it was actually pretty fun. Uh, not not fun, but interesting. So. Um, I was in Australia, got to go to Tasmania. That was all fun. I can talk about some of that stuff some other time. But then on my way back, I stopped in Taiwan for another conference, right? So this is all work-related travel. Uh, I was giving presentations at these conferences. Um, but at the end of the conference in Taiwan, I stayed on for three days to go do a hike because Tom and I like to hike, right? So this is us, you know, this is kind of that same thing. And I um, ended up hiking the highest point, Mount Jade, right? Yushan is what it's called. Um, but it's Mount Jade, which is the tallest mountain in Taiwan. It's about 12,000 something feet. So it's a decent sized mountain. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details. It's very complicated logistically. But um, most of the people who hike that mountain, there's uh, a mountain lodge that's like not quite a mile below the summit. And most people will actually spend the night there, right? And you have to get permits and it's a long, complicated story. But um, I did get the permit and that permit allows you to stay at the lodge. And I've actually done this once before in Europe. So I kind of had an idea of what it was like. Uh, so this, this piece actually involves the lodge, which was actually really interesting. So um, I got a little later start than I wanted, but I, you know, I made pretty good time. It's about, uh, what was it? I want to say eight kilometers from the trailhead. It's a little bit longer than that, but it, about eight kilometers from the trailhead to the lodge. And then from there, it's like two kilometers up to the summit. Uh, this is about a mile. Um, so I actually made pretty good time. I'm a, I'm a pretty fast hiker. Tom and I both hike fairly fast. So I passed a bunch of people on the way up to the lodge. Okay. Uh, and keep in mind, I know two words in Chinese, which is the language they speak there, right? Taiwanese or Chinese. Um, uh, ni hao, hello, right? Uh, and shi shi, thank you. So that's basically all I know in, in Chinese. Um, so as I'm passing people, uh, I'm often saying like ni hao or whatever. Uh, and it was actually, it was, the passing people is part of the story because I did pass a fair number of people um, where I was moving faster than they were. So they would get off to the side and I was like, you know, shi shi, thank you. And I just keep passing. A fair number of people, though, very quickly noticed that I looked different from everybody else, right? I'm the American, and they were not from the US, right? Um, so I would say probably a third of them, when I would say, like, ni hao, hello, they would say, good morning. Uh, in, in English, right? They would say good morning in English because that's a phrase that they clearly know. And so they would say good morning. And many times they would smile, 
right? And I was like, oh, cool, right? Like I'm I'm in the middle of nowhere. Like literally there's nothing around for miles. I'm at the top of this mountain. Um, and the people seem to be pretty friendly. And I was like, cool, you know, maybe I'll get up to the lodge and like there'll be some people there and they'll, they'll want to chat. And like, that would be nice, right? To just like chat with people. So I, I've got this expectation and I probably should not have this expectation, but I do. So I pass, I mean, the vast majority of people who are going out there um, and get up to the lodge right around noon, right, from when I started. Uh, and there is one couple who's already beat me to the lodge, right? Everybody else is behind me. So there's one couple that beat me to the lodge. I get there and as I'm checking in, because I do have a reservation or whatever, and they ask to see my permit, uh, the guy who checks me in speaks okay English, right? So it's just good. So I'm like, sweet, you know, somebody can can understand what I'm saying. Otherwise I'm using Google Translate, right? I'm like, pull up my phone, it's like, hey, here you are. Um, and he says, okay, follow me. I'm gonna take you up to your room. And basically how they've done this is they have, uh, like a lower bunk, but it's it's really long, right? So it probably can sleep like six people, but it's like one big bunk bed. And then above that is the same. It's just a big wood platform and they've got a little foam on it, right? But then on the top, it's the same thing. Probably can sleep like six people and they have three ladders to go up there, right? Yeah. So he walks me up to my room and the couple that's beat me there, right? They're on the top towards the end, but there's like one more space at the end where the wall is. Um, and he points to that space and he's like, that's your spot. <laughs> right. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, I, I don't care. I'm happy to have a spot. Right. Like I, it was complicated yeah, to even get there. So I'm spot. like, that's my spot. That's where I'll sleep. So I, you know, I've, I've just done like, I don't know, eight, kilometers, whatever that is, eight or nine kilometers. I'm kind of sweaty and gross or whatever, but I'm like, okay, let me unpack my stuff. So I like grab my sleeping bag. I throw it up there. Um, and I'm just beginning to unpack my stuff when the couple that's up there climb down and go talk to that same guy. Right. And of course they're speaking in Chinese. So I have no idea what they're saying, but they're, they're chatting with him. And then pretty quickly they come back, climb up the ladder, grab all of their stuff and leave. Hmm. And I'm like, that's, strange right like I, yeah. I don't really know what's going on but like okay because I, I don't understand the conversation right i have no idea so i unpack my stuff i grab some food and like eat a snack or whatever i go down to the kind of common area you know um like there's a, a place to sit and eat basically right where they're going to ser serve food so i eat a snack and i'm reading a book because i brought a book to read uh and it's actually pretty cold up there so i decide i'm going to go back up uh, on you know on my bunk and get in my sleeping bag just to keep warm so i'm sitting up there reading and during the next like four hours i kid you not at least four people come into the room with the host right the person who's assigning spots he walks him in and points to the bunk right next to mine and they wag a finger no and tell him they are not going to sleep there and walk back out of the room. Okay. So it's like person after person, as soon as they see me, they're like, uh-uh, I'm not sleeping next to that guy out of the room. And these are all people that you saw that you passed. Yeah. 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 Right. And of course, they're not saying it in English. I have all I can see is the, the finger wagging. Right, and then they leave the room. What, what, what was it? <laughs> um, and you know, maybe I'm just like super stinky or something, right? But like, come on, the lodge is super stinky, right? Like the whole lodge smells. Um, so at the very end, right, the very, literally the last person. So the rest of the room fills up that the whole lodge is packed. The last person to get up to the lodge that night is the person who was stuck sleeping next to me, mm. right? And why I recount the story, this is not necessarily meant to be political, right? Um, but it, it was a fascinating experience because in effect, I was being discriminated against, right? Oh, so you never, you never. No, no one ever told me. You're just assuming it was because you were American. I'm, I'm the American. Foreigner. Yeah. Really? That's interesting. I, I have no other explanation, right? It's yeah. not like I was like rampantly what if you stinky. did stink what if you had like <laughs> i guarantee i was not the stinkiest person in that lodge there is yeah. no way the but i was you. i was the only american in the lodge hmm. interesting so i i found that like really fascinating right and you could see like 
they weren't even close enough to be able to smell me, right? It was literally, he would point to that spot and they were like, no, just straight in his face. Like, no, we're not going to sleep there. Yeah. So it was, it was a fascinating experience that I'm still kind of like, I, I'm pretty sure they were basically discriminating against me because I'm American. I just, I don't want to sleep next to a guy. And I don't know what it was about being American. Right. Like, right. What are they worried about? What do they think I'm going to do? I don't know, but no one wanted to sleep next to me. Untrustworthy. Yeah. That's interesting. So, I mean, you lived in Japan for years, right? Did you ever yeah. experience anything like this? We love Americans. Just love us. <laughs> I don't know. Xenophobic Japanese people love Americans. And I don't mean to generalize to all Japanese people, but culturally, they tend not to love uh, outsiders that much. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I never really had saw or noticed any problems really um that's interesting well who knows now i'm curious if it was something else right then something maybe yeah uh all right sorry story yeah so that's my story to start the podcast today taiwanese (laughs) and honestly like they were very nice right when i went down to the kitchen to like you know the cafeteria whatever to eat um, I had to, I had to sit next to people because there were just so few spots. People didn't really want to sit next to me, but they kind of had to. And then they were explaining things, you know, like, Hey, you got to put your food waste here and this, that there. I have no idea what they're saying. Cause it's all in Chinese. And somebody explained, like, there were people who spoke perfect English sitting right next to me. Right. And they're like, Oh, here, let me translate for you. Right. And I was like, thank you. you. The That's they, Yeah. They could have talked to me. No one wanted to talk to me. Mm, it was really odd very strange and again maybe i was super stinky i don't think i was any stinky maybe there's like a cultural thing you don't pass people on trails and like uh, (laughs) i'm a trail passer (laughs) fast walker maybe Um, that's what it is i don't know yeah it's pretty interesting the uh all right we'll let's we'll um first off did you get to use any bidets uh okay um no, that where, where, well, yes, one, but they didn't have any in Australia, Tasmania, no bidets, Taiwan, nowhere I stayed until the very last uh, two nights. So after that hike, I was kind of ready for to be home. Um, I booked myself into a Sheraton right by the airport and they had a glorious Japanese bidet. Nice. Oh, it was so nice. I, I, I missed my bidet. I mean, what can I say? I, I, who did I tell this to? I, I think I may have posted it on Facebook. This was like a Facebook post. When I got to the hotel, I took a picture of the bidet. And I was like, look, I've been gone for almost three weeks. Clearly, I missed my wife and son the most. But right below them, my Lux bidet. But how is that like for an ad, right? Yeah. Like, can we give a better shout out to Lux bidet, our sponsor for the podcast, than I missed my bidet second only to my family Dude, yeah <laughs> that's pretty good okay all yeah. right we're gonna jump in uh so first uh we're gonna talk about an article by uh the new york times so this is interesting right because this is the well, new it's york an times. op-ed it's an op-ed so let's be clear it's an op-ed it's an so op-ed. it's an opinion piece by david brooks who is a conservative columnist for the new york times and um okay ryan geez and uh <laughs> uh he's talking about so we, the title is are, are we the bad guys here um and basically he's going into talking about elitism and how elitism has always existed and that but and that jur- journalism is is um well in that, that elitism is kind of like saturated many areas industries uh, including journalism and he was talking about the disproportion of Ivy League graduates that are in that industry that are the dis- disproportionate amount that uh, disproportionately high. And that um, but been also talking about basically making a case for why people could get disenfranchised with the establishment and why Trump could be a, a person that people would rally behind and uh, and that he's sort of a kind of like a anti-establishment candidate and that it, it, basically making a case for why he could be attractive to the mainstream everyday man 
um, and and how it's you know an elitist couldn't understand it and, and never would and it's because one well in one of his cases he makes it is that there's been like a double standard throughout history of uh, of elitism getting special cases um, and where and, you know he talks about being uh, you know the draft Vietnam draft and and you know elitists can get these college def uh, deferments or whatever they're called. Um, and uh, whereas everyone else has to get drafted and just different things like that. Um, anyway, uh, I thought it was an interesting article. And uh, Ryan, you said you agreed with some of it, um, but not other things. So to, give me your take. Yeah. Um, for our longtime listeners, right, people who remember way back when Josh was on here, he loved to bring up the topic of elites and elitism. Uh, you remember this, Tom, yeah. Uh, and I, I pushed back on it a lot, um, not because I disagree with the general sentiment. I think I, I, I agree with the general sentiment that there's clearly a reason why people feel disenfranchised and they, and they would support somebody like Trump, despite the fact that he's actually an elite, right? Which is bizarre. At, at some level, David Brooks never actually addresses the fact that the champion of the disenfranchised is a multi-billionaire who went to Ivy League schools. Right. So he never does address that. So Trump is a, you know, a child of a rich man who is rich himself and went to Ivy League schools. But that beside the point, um, who who qualifies as being the elite? Right. And Josh always struggled to define this and what he ultimately and this is a bit of a tangent. Right. But um, what he ultimately came to was elites are people who think they know better than you do for how to live your life, which is not really what David Brooks is saying in here. He basically defines the elite as the professional class. So people who have potentially some advanced education and that education provides them their occupation. So this would include engineers and, and lawyers and doctors, PhDs, right? College professors. Um, computer programmers, like anybody who falls into that professional class where they're not doing like, he wouldn't include plumbers or electricians, even though they do have, you know, advanced education beyond high school. Um, so he seems to be framing this elite thing as like the highly educated who have professional careers versus blue collar working class individuals. Do you agree with that distinction? Yeah. Yeah. So you like his distinction better than Josh's? Uh, well, I I think there's a lot of overlap in those two groups. You think? Oh, yeah, for sure. Hmm. See, and I would find that surprising just because, and I, I know we're going to talk about Florida. I hate to talk about Florida, but we're going to talk about Florida later. Um, but I, I'm going to bring it up again just because right now in the state of Florida, the Republican controlled legislature keeps telling everybody in the state what they have to do. Right. Uh, every legislator legislation does. Yeah. But if uh, Josh's definition of elite is that they know better. Right. And they, they're forcing me to do things that I don't want to do and don't agree with. Aren't they the elites? Right. Like by his definition, even yeah. if they, yeah. I mean, you're, you're being a leader or, you know, being in leadership is one thing. It's this, I think it's this air of condescension and that, 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 the kind of a disdain for a different group. Um, there's this, and I, I actually was thinking about this the other, when, when I read this article, but there's these memes and somebody brought it up. I think it was on Bill Meyer's show or something like that. Someone brought up the memes and they're memes and they say, uh flyover states and it's like a it's like the united states and it's like flyover states and then there's another one that says f you a stan or something like that and and it's like Ooh. showing all the middle states right and, like, and he's basically extremely condescending like everything in the middle is garbage and the only thing mm -hmm. that matters is the is the, the east coast west coast hmm? the coasts yeah yeah the coasts. The, the, it's like of any insignificance insig at all and it's like that I, that, like, that elitist carry that, that reeking of, like, I, I'm better and know better, and you don't know anything, and you're, you're, you're complete waste, and, uh, uh, and that, that's that, that, um, 
resentment that people are keyed into and that, that they're resentful of that this uh you know working class and and trump supporters i think are, are keyed into yeah i mean to, to yeah i don't want to give david brooks more credit than he deserves here he's certainly not the first one to have this idea right this idea has been around for quite a long time um his writing here is not terrible i think he's fairly clear about it um but coming to that point yeah i can certainly see and I've, I've i think i've conceded this all the way back when josh was making the point um highly educated people on the left do have a tendency to speak condescendingly about i don't know that they speak to them this way but to speak condescendingly about Trump supporters, for instance, right? For the the MAGA base. Um, I don't know that they would do that with just like your average person, right? But certainly about the opposition. But isn't that basically what Trump supporters say about the left, right? I mean, they're very condescending and demeaning about them too. It's just, it's done in different ways, yeah, right? It's definitely them looking back up and giving the middle finger back up right and, and, and right it's uh uh but th so there it's actually there's this um what was interesting is how i got keyed in on this was a news reel and they were talking about this article and then uh and it was on fox and they showed a they showed a snippet and they basically it was like a, a mur mural or something like that and they have mm -hmm. this, a bunch of snippets of newscasters making fun mocking trump supporters and it was interesting you know all these other things are like oh yeah da, da, da. and they're just like you know and it was like don lemon and, and all these like major uh, main stream media outlets mm -hmm. and they're just it was like a couple of minutes long of like people just dogging on if you're a trump supporter or if you're a republican or something like that and how stupid you were and uh and i, and I thought that was interesting um and so, I mean, it definitely went along with the narrative that uh, it supported the narrative that there is an air of like, we know best. So I, I do tie those two together. Are there conservative, you know, uh, professional working class? Yeah, of course. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and there's plenty of them and, you know, I'm part of that group. And so, um, but uh, it def I definitely rub shoulders with those that are on that. I would feel are in that other camp, the elitist camp. Yeah. Um, okay. Can can I can I ask a politically incorrect question? Sure. <laughs> um, is it possible? Okay. That there's a little bit of truth behind some of those claims about some Trump supporters not being the smartest cookies around? Oh, for sure, for sure. Okay, um, yeah, uh, and, and I mean, I'm it, thinking- yeah, And no, they'd probably ahead. be the first to admit that, right? They're, they're part of the get her done class, right? And they're like, there are a lot of working professionals, blue collar, and, uh, mm -hmm. and that's, um, I think that makes them an easy target, right? Of this kind of condescension. But I don't think it's compa one, compassionate, and two, it it it's not productive. But so. I, I'm I'm not going to disagree with you, right? I don't think it's productive to just insult the opposition and to find easy ways to insult the opposition. I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, it, it makes for cheap laughs and it makes for cheap content, right? So it's very yeah. easy. I'm trying to remember, he was a former um, correspondent on The Daily Show, but he's now got like a YouTube series where he just goes out and interviews Trump supporters at Trump rallies. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um, I'm forgetting his name, but yes. uh, it's not hard for him. And granted, it's all edited. Right. All it is, he cherry yes. picked every I'm sure he cherry picked, right? right. Maybe 90% of the people he interviews are like erudite, smart, right. politically savvy operators who have clear reasons for why they're supporting Trump and they can articulate them in very coherent fashion. 
And then he picks the 10% who, holy crap, you're like, wow. Yeah, um, yeah that like, <laughs> what, is what is his name? name? Do you remember his name? I'm looking for it. Yeah. Like man on the street. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Jordan Kepler, Klepper. Jordan yeah, Klepfer. Jordan Klepfer. Jordan Klepfer. Yes, versus um, MAGA supporters. Yeah. Um, and and I get it. Like I said, I'm sure it's heavily edited. It's probably not your typical Trump supporter, right? Right. Um, but it does make for easy content and easy comedy to be able to point at people and to laugh at people because they do say really stupid things, right? Right. Um, that's not to say that there wouldn't probably be to some degree, equally um, inarticulate, incoherent, and dumb people on the left. Totally. And well, you've got shows where they do this and they're just not on the mainstream media, right? Um, I trying to remember the guy's name. Um, he's a conservative dude and he, he'll go out and do man on the streets and, and get stuff, right? And people saying just crazy stuff and then he'll, he puts it online, right? And uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Uh, yeah, now I'm going to forget his name anyway. Well, I mean, you don't, you know, don't need to go much further than Jimmy Kimmel, right? Which you may not watch Jimmy Kimmel and obviously no one's on the air right now. Uh, but Jimmy Kimmel will regularly have just like random people walking down the street in Los Angeles and he'll ask them really simple questions of like, um, you know, what country is X or, you know, what state is this or name, name three presidents or like tell me the last book you read. And if it's any indication of the average American, which maybe again, it's editing and it's very selective. Oh, wow. We, our yeah. future is bleak, right? Oh, for uh, sure. What was that uh, movie where everybody had just grown really stupid? Um, um, Idiocracy? Idiocracy. Is that what it was yeah. called? <laughs> yeah. Every time I see those Jimmy Kimmel clips, I'm like, oh man, we are in trouble. Um, yes. Yeah. I don't know. And right now we are in fact laughing at people who aren't particularly articulate and um, maybe smart. Um, is it okay to do that? Is that a bad thing? Oh, for Am sure. I, it's a bad thing or it's okay to do it. It's uh, you, we're always going to laugh at people that are dumb, right? That do dumb things. <laughs> and are dumb. Right? You, yeah. uh, it, it, so we're it's, it's, it's this problem is we've sort of like weaponized it right into this uh into this political thing and that and associated anyone that could think this way is stupid right and mm -hmm. uh it's we've got this um uh, there's there's a narrative that your idea can't be you know like Oh, you don't take the vaccine. You're a complete idiot, right? That you wouldn't take the vaccine. Oh, you would, you vote for Trump. Oh my gosh, you are so stupid. And like, there are legitimate things, right? There, there are legitimate concerns with, uh, with, and, and I think that are coming forth more and more all the time with the vaccines and other, um, this, you know, kind of just unilateral decisions that have been made. And I think, but to be like, oh, you're dumb if you think that. And it's like, and you couldn't, there's no way you could have a concern with that. And, and like, but yet we keep finding instances where it did, where it would, was concerned. Like I very rarely found anything in the world to be an absolute, right? This is the mm -hmm. best thing ever. And there's no considerations. There's no, you shouldn't be concerned at all with the vaccine or have any considerations with it, right? No, usually there's always some considerations and there should be some costs, right? Some, some pros right. and cons that you have to weigh out. And like, and they should be legitimate and they should be legitimized. And like, that's, it's weird when we like, oh, you're an idiot. If you didn't, if you're not hundred percent on board with this idea or this idea or this idea. And especially when so many have turned out to be wrong. Right. And you're like in hindsight and you're like, oh, okay. So you, you know, you didn't know hundred percent or this wasn't hundred percent, but you were telling me I was stupid at the time. Right. It's, it's uh, anyway um the efficacy of masks or you know just all these things uh -huh. especially that come out in the last few years i think have been a big thing uh okay. you know anyway um so that that i you know so that's that's where that's where i'm at on it is like i mean and do you do you agree with that that it's just sort of this 
toxic culture. And Jimmy Kimmel's even done some on against Trump, right? Where he made Trump supporters look stupid and uh, the kind of man on the street. And then they made, uh, sure. He just makes everybody look stupid. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, that's well, part of why it's funny. Right. Some t- I mean, he was political at times. And especially oh, he's often very political. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to say he's not political. Clearly he is political. So that, that I'm, I'm conceding that immediately. Right. Like most of the late night talk show hosts are political why I brought up Jimmy Kimmel is because he just takes like the average American yeah. and doesn't do it for political reasons. It just makes him look stupid. Right. right. And it's really simple things. Uh, like I said, like name three presidents and your average American, like can't do it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and maybe that's not true. Maybe he is doing selective editing, just like Jordan Clever. Oh, well, of course he's picking, the, you know, if someone answered the question correctly, that that, that what's not going to make the, like, Oh, <laughs> He answered it correctly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and occasionally he does show people who like nail it. Right. So one of them was like name three Marvel um, superheroes. And invariably people go to the DC universe from Marvel. Mm-hmm. Right. Which yeah, I don't mean to Batman go. Yeah. Yeah. But they're like, Oh, Batman and uh, the Hulk. Right. And he's like Batman wrong. Right. Um, but he did have one on there who was like named like 15, just boom, 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 boom. And they're like, oh, we picked the wrong person, right? Mm -hmm. But they will they will keep some of them, right, as a good contrast occasionally. But I'm sure, again, there's selective editing. Uh, Yeah, no, I I think it's a a totally valid point. Um, What David Brooks is saying. Uh, Have you you seen Dave Chappelle's... um, uh, Well, sorry, finish your thought and then I'll go... Uh, I mean, we can come back to that. Uh, I, I do think it's a valid point, okay? Is it then justifiable as a response to to then flip that and be like, okay, and this is because we think you're condescending, whether they are or not, right? And I, I, I don't know if you remember, we had this conversation with Josh forever ago. Because our dad was a general contractor, I've poured concrete. I've done electrical, I've done plumbing, right? That is hard work. I never look down on plumbers, electricians, people who do construction. If anything, I'm gonna be like, hey, can I give you something to drink? Can I give you food, right? Like, I I really appreciate the work they do because I don't wanna have to do that work, right? I have a job where I get to sit in an air conditioned office at a computer and then teach people, right? Like I have a great job where I don't have to do the manual labor and I'm very appreciative of that. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, certainly there are people who are condescending and demeaning towards people who don't have the same level of education or, or job that they do that are not professionals or whatever. Um, but does that then allow those who feel like they're being condescended to is that justification for them to support someone like Trump? Well, okay, two two thoughts. One, um, y- you you know, if you look at any movie, the bad guy's usually some condescending jerk, right? Who's mm-hmm. like who? Oh, well, that's you know, every Bond film ever, right? Right. Like every Bond film is just like that. But it's interesting that, and then that's funny because that usually comes out of Hollywood, and that's but the same group that's condescending jerk to the, this half of America. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and some of my brother brings up a lot because he'll say like half of America voted for Trump, right? Like half of America, you know, not quite, but yes. Yeah. Right. Trump has never gotten a majority vote. We're, we're, yes. I can, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna uh, like, it's close enough. I could say half. Yes. Right? You can, you can say half. And uh, meaning like, that's you know it's not some weird little off group right that was half of america went and voted for trump and then you're like so that's like you know uh, you know uh, that's a lot of people and not Mm -hmm. and not all of them are stupid and uh um and so it that that's basically you know that's one out of every two that's the you know that you're gonna see is gonna be a a trump supporter or or at least sorry not a trump supporter but at least voted for trump and um that's i think that says something but um the other part is uh yeah it is um so so i'm like like that that's what we define usually as the bad guy is the person who's is usually done based off of their how how they treat other people and if they're condescending to them if and if they just put them in 
they prejudge a person just based on maybe a political beliefs or, or religious beliefs or something like that. Right. That's what, that's, uh-huh. a bigot. that's, that's, that's what discrimination is. And then, and then that's sort of that group that's doing that. So it's like, I, you know, uh, that's, that's how Hollywood's defining villains. Right. And, and um, so I, you know, I, I agree with you. I do think it, it is, I think it's a real thing and I think it's a problem. And uh, cause I think it, when you think of someone that's stupid, you can't have productive dialogue with them, right? Because you're like, oh, you're an idiot. You don't know. Right. Um, and I would say this, you have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people that are like, uh, you've got, I don't know if you've seen the videos. There's videos of people that go and work and they like work at Microsoft. And there's this like famous one where this girl's like, and then I went to, I don't know, she worked at Google. I think she worked at Google and she's like showing her day. And mm-hmm. he's just dicking around all day long. And then we went this and this in the, in the office is built in this museum. So we went through the museum and we did this thing. And then I got a latte and then I went over here and got this free meal. Uh, and like, she probably did like an hour of work of actual work. Right. And you're like, you, and she doesn't seem like she's that smart. Right. But she's in the elite club. She's just mm-hmm. in the club by virtue of she's has a professional job. Right. Right. And, uh, and, and so like, there's plenty of dumb people on, in the elite side as well, that they're just oh, elite just because they have dumb, a professional dumb. job. They work in an office. Trust me. I know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm very well aware of that fact. <laughs> but, um, oh, so the, there's an SNL spe- uh, opening dialogue by Dave Chappelle. I saw it. Yeah. You've seen it. Yeah. Oh about yeah. Of course. Yeah. Why the Trump he's like, I can he, see why people supported yeah. Trump, right? Because he said, I'm the guy who's violating the system and yeah. I'm I'm telling you I'm violating the system, right? I'm yeah. I'm I'm cheating and I've told you all I'm cheating, right? Yes. I'm the one doing it. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to continue cheating. Yeah, yes, right? exactly. And David Brooks actually ends his article by saying the reason why everybody likes Trump is because he's sticking his thumb in the eye of the elites, right? Right. I mean. It, Again, I don't love that, right? And it it's almost like it's a non sequitur. It doesn't necessarily follow that um, all of these people who feel marginalized by the mainstream media, by Hollywood, by all of us, that they should then be like, and Trump is our hero, right? right? It would make so much more sense if their hero was, uh, who's the Montana senator who's like a working class, like cowboy, right? Like that would make so much more sense to me if it was like somebody who was not a New York elitist. So we're going to get behind this elitist. Yes, right. Yeah. I mean, I get that. Like he, but he's, he's their mouthpiece, right? He would say things, nobody, because here's the thing. They got behind Mitt Romney, right? And and Mitt Romney's a soft spoken, nice guy. And they were like, yeah. ooh, screw that. And like Trump says, mm-hmm. Trump is potent with his statements. And they yes. loved and they loved it. And like that's that's why they love him, is because he um, and so like I don't even think I don't think they love it. I don't think that, you know, yes, I, I agree that it's like it's weird that he is an elitist, but I don't think that's that's the reason why they love him. It's- no, I think they love him because he has no filter, right? And at some level, I mean, it's going to sound terrible. I don't think Trump's all that smart, right? I mean, we've talked about this on the show before. Yeah. Part of the reason why I think DeSantis is scarier than Trump is because DeSantis is actually smarter than Trump, right? So yeah. I disagree with their politics for both of them. But Trump is not a smooth operator. And no. Josh actually, I think, won the argument when we were debating, like, did Trump collude with the Russians to rig the election. And Josh's argument was like, Trump's not smart enough to do it. And I was like, okay, you win. Right. right. Like, yeah, you're, you're well, absolutely right. I DeSantis is agree. smart enough to do it. He's, he's a smooth, not a smooth operator is probably a great, good statement. It's, it's that. Yeah, I, I agree. He's just kind of like a, a bull in a China shop. And absolutely. Just kind of smashing through. And yeah, I, you say he's not smart. I think he's very smart. But I don't, but I think he's too much of a megalomaniac to, to like do anything diabolical, right? It's just him. Trump? It's, it's him and oh. being corrupt and being reckless, right? I think it's more, yeah. of, the, more of the problem. Um, well, and, and I, will, I will concede one area because people can be smart in different ways, right? right? I don't think Trump is particularly smart in like the sense that 
again, me as an elite, like I would value the smartness. I think Trump is one of the world's best con men, right? Like he could con me out of my house, right? If I didn't know the guy, he could show up to my house and within an hour, I'd be like, here are the keys. Here's the deed to the house, right? Like he is a very smooth operator that way. Um, right. But he, he like, if you just listen to him talk, he's not particularly coherent, right? He talks yeah. around things like- He talks in a very and, weird way. Yes, it, yeah. it drives me bonkers because he's, it, it, and there is the guy on Saturday Night Live who does like a really good, he'll periodically do Trump impressions, right? And it's funny because they'll have like a list. I don't know if you watch it, but they'll have a list of like 10 completely random words. And he'll start with the first one. Right. And somehow hit the end, like he hits all of them, and you're like, in a weird order. Yes, you're uh, like, how did a, you get there? There's a video uh, you got to see it. It's about the way Trump talks, and it says, and it does this. It like he says, I want to say this, and he and it shows clips of him talking, and he's like, why would you say it in that order? And it basically, but he makes a case for it. He says he's doing it to emphasize. He's putting emphasis on the first and the last words, and he'll repeat words, right? He'll repeat them. And he's putting emphasis on because they're power words. And he was basically saying it's a lot more, str- it's a stronger sentence, but like <laughs> grammatically, it doesn't make sense. And no. I was like, that's really interesting. Well, yeah. I think here's the thing. Like, I know that we're doing on this. We weren't meant to go on Trump. That's but, okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole, like, there's a charisma video about Trump and handshakes. I don't know if you've seen any of these with the, he does a power handshake. And there's a whole thing on it. And he shows him with world leaders. He grabs them and he yes. pulls them. You've seen he it? He pulls them. Yes, yeah. I've seen and that. Because like, it's about him getting power over them. Yes, yes. yes. And so yeah. in that, like, here's the thing. Yeah, it's like a, almost a con man move. And it's also, but it's also, that's what leadership is, right? Is these power moves, right? Like, I'm <laughs> that's in what, charge. Like, that's I like superficial, like, yes. oh, um, 100%. jokish leadership, right? Like, a true leader would never do this. Somebody that you're like, wow, this is, like, okay, hypothetically, right? Do you think Jesus Christ would have been like, I'm going to emphasize power words, and I'm going to grab people and pull them in, right? Like, right. no, no, right? They, they did kill Jesus Christ, though. So you remember that. I don't know. <laughs> well, I was going to use Martin you know. Luther King, right? And I don't think Martin Luther King would, and they killed him too, they killed right? Him so too. they killed yeah. him too. Yeah. Um, I, when, when we talk about Trump as like a leader, right? It's all fake. It's all, he knows he's acting, right? Like right. he's doing things that he thinks are what leaders would do. But like, when he's shaking hands with actual leaders, they're like, what is wrong with you? Right. Yeah, like he does, everything you're doing is wrong. Oh, he does weird <laughs> stuff. Like there's a, yes. there's a video where they're doing the, like the UN or the G G20 summit. Yeah. And he's like shoving people to get to the front <laughs> of the picture. It's like, he does weird stuff. Right. But it, well, it, but it, like everything is for that. Yes. That, to, that, to create it, this persona yeah, of 100%. I'm a true leader. Right. Yes. But it's almost like it's a caricature of leadership. It's not, it's not real leadership. It's like, if you, if you took a four-year-old and said, what does it take to be a good leader? It's Donald Trump, right? It's like, right, I'm right. loud. Yeah. I'm annoying. I shake people's hands in weird ways. I say strange stuff, right? I push my way to the front. Right. These are what leaders I'm a leader. Do. But <laughs> the problem is, is there are a lot of people that are leaders that do that, that, that got into their leadership positions through that, these means. Yeah. It's, it, <laughs> it's so bizarre. It, it is bizarre. <laughs> yes. I agree. Again, um, like I, I would be, I would be so much more sympathetic and I, I, I am sympathetic. Don't get me wrong to the point that David Brooks is making. The elites are condescending. I, I, let's use his definition and we'll just admit that. Right. But if the leader that the these people had picked was not Donald Trump, right, but legit was like a cowboy or a plumber, right, like someone who is still charismatic, but literally came from the working class and represented their values in any meaningful way, I would be so much more sympathetic, right? I just really struggle that their hero is a billionaire from New York City with an Ivy League education. Well, yeah, there's some um, there's some <laughs> hypocrisy there. Tons, so yeah. much, right? Agree. Agree. And at the end of the day, do you think Donald Trump actually wants to hang out with any of those people who support him? Um, they yeah. can't even get into his club. 
right? So would like, you yeah. would you agree that if it was if there was I'm, I'm trying to think of an example like yeah maybe this Montana governor I don't even know um, I'm trying to remember his name. Um, but there's, if he if he yeah. said talk the way Donald Trump talk, like had this you know would talk the way he did and got the attention that he did, I I, I think everyone would coalesce around him too. Would you agree? It, it's it's not his it's not his his uh stature as an as a rich guy it's the way he talks and the clout he has um yeah possibly it was john tester who i was thinking of um i'm trying to remember what his background is uh yeah he's a farmer yeah he's a farmer right like total respect for the guy he's a farmer right probably a salt Um, of the earth kind of guy yeah and and that's like if he was their leader and he was honest, right? Like, right. I would love somebody who's just honest yes. and a farmer. Then yeah. I would be like, hey, be like, hey, they, you have total the, respect. You have the moral high ground. Yes, yes. I would concede this, right? right? Yes. But no, they picked the most corrupt, the villainous caricature yes. of a, a super villain yeah. that you could find. And they're like, no, 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 we love this guy. Yes. We're going to support him through all of his crimes and his corruption because he he pokes fun at the elites. And I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> come on right right uh and don't get me wrong i think john tester is like a democrat or something right so so they would never pick him but he's the kind of person that i'm thinking of right he's a farmer pick a farmer right pick somebody not a billionaire from new york city (laughs) so i don't know i I don't know if that was where you wanted to go with this Uh, again i think we have a lot of common ground here i just really struggle with like the non sequitur to they have legitimate grievances and so they picked this guy to lead them right that's really right. i struggle with that that's interesting that you that that's yeah. the thing you struggle with uh i'm conceding the grievances i don't right. have a no, problem exactly. with them having well, yeah. grievances yeah. yeah yeah that's yeah um well, interesting the all right let's move on to uh your your to my you, article yeah give us the the, the, the summarize it for the audience yeah, it's just such a, a weird thing. So um, we're going to Florida politics. Apologies in advance, right? I, I always talk about Florida politics, but this is something that DeSantis did um, in the last couple of years that's just kind of weird, right? So it's not even, I mean, maybe it's political, but it's just really weird. Um, you know, most, uh, I mean, all states basically have National Guard, right? So we have this National Guard, they train at the state level or whatever, and they can get called up for national responsibilities. A lot of states have gotten rid of a state guard, right? Which is effectively like a state level militia. Ron DeSantis brought back the state guard, and he got funding from the Florida legislature to provide training for this state guard. Um, When he pitched it, to the legislature, the argument was that the state guard was going to get called up to help in situations where there was an emergency. A hurricane hits, we need a state guard, right? I don't know why we would need more than the National Guard, but that's fine. We need a state guard. So that's what he pitched it as, is like an emergency response group that would then you know, help with emergencies or whatever. Then um, he gets the money and they start their training. And it turns out that it's a military boot camp and he wants to use them to like eject migrants out of the country and to send them on personal missions that he's like, I'm going to send you to Texas to help protect the border. Right. And he's literally doing like a military boot camp. And the (laughs) the headline of this article is military veterans quit. DeSantis's Florida State Guard over militia-like training, right? And it talks about like some of the people who signed up for this are retired veterans who have disabilities, right? Like they've got a bad back, but they thought they were just going to go help people like handing out water and stuff, you know, maybe doing some rescue things. And no, he's got them repelling from, you know, buildings and climbing under barbed wire. And then one of them, right? Uh, I should find the specific one, but there's a guy in here uh, who... Let me see if I can find who it was. Um, but he's like a former veteran who filed a complaint with the local police because he was complaining about how they were being treated. And they so disregarded his complaint that they actually were physically violent with him and threw him into a van and actually hurt him even more. And so he filed a police complaint 
against Ron DeSantis's state guard, mm-hmm. right? And I don't know that I have like a big takeaway from this other than like, what the hell is Ron DeSantis doing? <laughs> um, and, you know, he's he's burning cash for no reason, which he does this all the time. But like, what the hell, Tom? What, what is this? What is he doing? What is going on? Yeah. So I know I read the article. It, it's interesting because um, it got me a little curious because I was like, OK, state guard versus national guard. Right. And mm-hmm. yeah, I think you kind of explained it. But yeah, national guard is kind of like at the behest of the federal government. Right. And can right. can be can, can uh, I think they the federal government could could pull the Florida National Guard over to like Alabama to help with something uh, across right. state lines, whereas the state guard is solely under the under the management of the of the governor and you and usually can't go outside the state unless they're invited by another state like going to Texas. Right. right. So it's like it's basically like their uh, only elite gr- guard. Right. Is basically mm-hmm. what it'd be. Uh, and so I, I looked that up. Right. And so it, it, the article did say like half of the states have a state guard. And, um, but I mean, it's unclear what state of, uh, what status those are in. So I looked at Utah and Utah has an inactive state, state guard. guard. So we, we have it, but it's, we're not doing anything with it. And I think right. that's what the Florida was as well. It was just right. sort of it was inactive. Yeah. And I'm wondering maybe most of these states are inactive in that they're not, they don't have anything. Um, right. so it's, it's interesting. So, I, I mean, I, I'll play, I'm going to play both sides of this. Cause um, <laughs> so, I mean, the thing is they, so they just had a graduation. They graduated their first group of 120 yes. guards. So they've got yes. 120 elite guards <laughs> that are going to go do, do whatever DeSantis Ron DeSantis work. wants. Yes. You know, assassinate the uh, Ecuador uh, presidential candidates. And uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure they were behind it. Um no, but, and so, you know, and, and yes, there were a couple of things like the guy, I read the article the, the, about the guy's incident where, yeah, the, the military vet, the, the vet that got kind of manhandled, they did mm-hmm. do a probe on it and they were like, there was no misconduct here. And so they dismissed yeah. it. And I think like in any situation, any boot camp or anything like that, they're going to have, there's going to be some people that are going to wash out and, and be disenfranchised. Right. And they're going to be like, this was, they were mean, right. They suck. Sure. Right? You know, yeah. I'm going to complain. So it's hard to say. Uh, yeah. They did increase the funding. And so I guess they've allotted up to like, I think 10,000 um, uh, recruits, no, 1500, 1500. Yeah. It's um, yeah. But it's it was originally like was. 500 and now it's 1500. So they've increased it and they increased funding. And they were even saying like maybe buying helicopters and, and stuff like that. And so it's, and you know, guns, that's interesting. Yes. <clears throat> I don't. <clears throat> um, so like, I think this is a big nothing burger, but in that. Um, uh, it, 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 so I, I'll, I, I will play both sides of this. I, I, I think this is a big nothing burger. I don't think there's anything really here for the most right. part, but I will say like, elite guards that are un groups of you know guards that are under certain control is sort of like uh uh what's the word it is th- this a comp usually always accompanies but bad bad players throughout history right and it's uh you know you had hitler and the ss right and they would do their stuff and you have um uh and and the funny thing is is this was actually um, I'm trying to think of some other instances, but because uh, the Russians had somebody, as the gulags, or it was the oh, Gestapo. gulags were the locations, but Gestapo, yeah, um, and uh, Gestapo, things like that, right? You always have this thing, and and the and the and the funny thing, irony is like, is I was bringing this up about the FBI, which is under the jurisdiction of the president, is right. that they are being misused and abusing their power. Um, mm-hmm to to like change change uh, you know meddle with the election and things like that and so um and then i and then i brought up the praetorian guard or that in roman times and mm-hmm. like they would they would mess with elections they would mess with stuff all the time and like that's that is uh so like when people start doing this like it, you know i gotta get my own guard it's always like little red flag right You're like what are you doing right so yeah. I'm, I'm with you like that's weird why would you do that right but um 
but yeah, I don't think this is anything, but I do. It is, a, it is a, like a small red flag of like, what, what are you doing here? Yeah. Um, I do. There, there was one other thought and that I think we are seeing, you know, there's a lot of talk about deglobalization and mm-hmm. uh, a lot of localization of certain things. Like they're talking about, we're going to relocate a lot of manufacturing into the United States because we're seeing sort of this, we're seeing deglobalization and we're not going to rely on China as much to be the right. factory, things like that. And I think that's going to transcend a lot of different ways. And like, obviously the, the union still is still together. It hasn't broken apart yet. So, you know, you probably don't need military force yet, but like, <laughs> uh, that's, you know, these are all like things, right. Of like, mm-hmm. I think people are kind of reexamining their backyard and being like, okay, what do we have here? What's here? What, what do we need to be more self-sufficient? And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but it's, I think it's a little bit, I think everybody is sort of doing that to some extent or another, like every kind of government, you know, city, state, federal. Yeah. Anyway, that's my take. Okay. I I like your take. I I think you're probably right, right? I I think it's largely a nothing burger. I I, I think that's generally true. It's It's a big waste, right? So if nothing burgers count as like a big waste of money, I think that's probably what it is. But I, I like your second point of like, what are you doing, right? Why do you need your own personal guard, mm. right? That that seems really fishy and it's weird. Um, I had yeah. this history teacher. He was really good. But he th- there was this funny thing he talked about. And I'm trying to think of the examples. But he talked about leaders and his presidents. He, there's th- like three times that presidents would start designing their own uniforms for the military. And, uh, and he said it was always like a weird, it would always turn out disastrous. Like they were doing, <laughs> and it was like leaders that would end up doing weird stuff. And he was saying like, this was like a, um, the, not a litmus test, but like the, the precursor to them, like getting doing, weird, right? Going and off you, the deep and, end. Yeah. I'm just like, we're going to design the uniform. You're going to wear this. And you're like, <laughs> what are you doing? Right. Yeah. Like, you don't need, we, you don't no. even need to be worrying about this. That's the last thing you should be worrying about. Right? <laughs> uh, but I always thought that was interesting. And this, this sort of like, I think you know, I need my own guard and they're going to fall, you know, and we're going to do things. I'm going to send them on missions. Like, no, you don't, you don't need to do that. <laughs> you don't need to do that. Uh, that's good to know. If I ever get to the point, Tom, where I'm like, I want to design military uniforms. Yeah. It's time for you to be like, Mm-mm, no, right. Like, let's, no, right. let's have a real that's conversation. A, yeah. It's on my checkbox of yeah. to assassinate you. <laughs> uh, okay. Because you mentioned the FBI, I just have to bring it up. Uh, the FBI just shot and killed somebody in the state of Utah. Yeah. That was interesting. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? So for those who didn't catch this story, it's been all over the news. The guy was making threats against Biden and a whole bunch of other politicians, right? All Democratic politicians. Um, and the Secret Service flagged him. Biden was actually going to Salt Lake City to give a talk or something. Uh, so they sent the FBI to his house. This is not the first time I think that they'd been to his house. They'd been once before because he'd made these claims, you know, the, these uh, uh, um the you know that these statements right that he was going to do this before these threats that's what i was looking for um i didn't catch exactly how this played out right but pretty clearly um they went there he pulled a gun on them they shot him and they killed him and that happened in provo right so that's less than an hour away from where you live yeah um what was your take on it uh i thought it was interesting yeah i thought this so (laughs) <laughs> I just sent you a link. I'm going to talk oh. about it in a second, but, um, okay. the, so. Oh, it's... is that the guy? No, no oh, I, I haven't seen his photo or is this something else? Yeah. Oh, that, oh. yeah, that is the guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, interesting. There's a picture okay. if you open the article. So put it up on the screen afterward. Right. And, okay. um, so I'm laughing cause, uh, so for, first up, there's this, like that picture, you can see the FBI agent. It's the girl mm-hmm. and the girl with the, AK-47 or something like that. Oh, you let know. me see. Is it the KSL TV article or? Um, anyway, uh, here, I'll just send you the actual image. Okay. Because uh, I'm it, looking it at a picture of the guy. It I made me laugh the... because um, 
like there's this girl so she's got fbi they got fbi shirts and uh, but she's basically she's got a massive uh like ak-47 look like some kind of like something on the end she's wearing khakis and a polo with this massive. oh no that's rifle. a camera tom that's a camera no no, no, no. Uh, yeah the photo you just sent she's got a camera oh hang on hang on no you're right okay, fine <laughs> good that's better i was like they're sending <laughs> fbi like... in with like some big old and like no protective, protective gear, gear and an AK-47. Like, no, she's got a camera. Gone, go. And, uh, <laughs> no, you're right. That would be yeah. crazy, but no, that's just a camera. Okay. Um, that's <laughs> phew. All right, get that out of the way. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. It's like you make because the thing is, people make threats against the president all the time. FBI calls them, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't mean it." it was just yeah, I didn't know it was illegal to do that. It is, in fact, yeah. illegal to make death threats against the president. You can't yes. do that. Yeah. yeah, and so I'm sure this guy, they called him, and he was probably like, "Up yours, butthole!" Right? Hey. And then they probably sent agents over, and then he was probably resistive or probably pulled like you said pulled a gun on him and then he they, did they had uh, to, that was uh, that was the yeah. story is he pulled a gun on them and they said you know lower your gun and he didn't they killed him yeah that seems it seems pretty this straightforward it's just one of these cases that just escalated but, yeah um, anyway it's um uh guy and the guy's obviously stupid or stupid and uh didn't <laughs> um you know easily could have de-escalated that if you wanted yes to absolutely um yeah. Anyway, just thought I'd mention it. I thought it was uh, fascinating. Did that happen yesterday? I think it was like yesterday. Uh, yesterday, right? ready for yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty toxic political environment that we live in these days. Everybody should be listening to this podcast because if you listen to this podcast, we will. We can't actually guarantee that you won't do this, but we'd like to believe that it will help you see the other side and not want to kill them. <laughs> so, <laughs> Can we say that? Can we say that about finding common battlegrounds? Yeah. Yeah. And like we said, Ryan and I will, and, and uh, here, here's the thing, Ryan and I will, will agree a lot. And you might be like, oh, well, you guys are like center centered, you know, left center and right center. Here's the thing. We probably are. And that's because we talk to each other yeah. and we, we concede points to each other. And we're like, yeah, that's nothing. This isn't a big deal. That is, you know, and, but yeah, I give you that. And yes, that is weird. And I think that's a healthy, that's how you get healthy dialogue is yes. talking to the other side in a constructive way where you're not like, but what is it where, cause most, when you argue with other people, you believe they're evil, stupid or uninformed, right? And that's like, you're like, you don't know anything. You're, you're stupid, <laughs> you're just plain evil. And you're like, actually most of the side isn't. And uh, if, you have right. a, if you have a good conversation, you'll, you'll find out that they have valid points uh, as well, in and just as you do, right? And that's 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 humanity. Yeah. On that note, I think we should wrap it up. What do you think? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, if you have comments, uh, obviously, you know, this gets posted on YouTube. You can drop them up there, or you can email us. Um, Finding common battlegrounds at gmail.com, I think is our email address. We, I don't think we've ever gotten an email, but but you can email us or drop comments in YouTube or something like that. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll be back soon. Uh, Tom, look, we don't always agree when it comes to politics, um, but if there's one thing that we do agree on, it's that there's only one way to clean up after going to the bathroom, and that's with a Lux bidet. Listen, I've been using bidets forever, all right? And Lux is the best, all right? So, I mean, I've got like the little squatty potty thing and the bidet. It's like a whole experience. It's it's actually, it's probably one of the highlights of the entire day. But like, it gets me clean and it gets me ready to uh, talk politics in a civilized manner. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. Um, every time that I use a toilet, it doesn't have a bidet. When I go to a friend's house, you know, I just don't use their toilet, first of all. But uh that's about as uncivilized as it gets. So uh, civil conversations demand civil hygiene practices. That's why everyone should get a bidet. And just to be clear, right, we, we want to make, make it clear. Listeners can get their own Lux bidet with 10% off by ordering at luxbidet.com and using our promo code FCBG10, Finding Common Battlegrounds 10. Uh, and the last thing that we want to say, uh, Lux is supporting this podcast. Uh, but they don't side one. They don't support one side or the other. They support civil conversations and clean butts.
We hope you enjoyed this episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds. The music is by Ben Sound. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and not those of their employers. For more information or more episodes, you can find us at findingcommonbattlegrounds.com.